Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday. Over here in the Atlantic, things remain fairly quiet. We have a strong uh, tut-like trough elongated zonally over the Caribbean, keeping activity down over here. The models, the GFS specifically, has been trying to form a little bit of a low here east of Nicaragua and spin it up in a couple days and move into Central America. I have my doubts that this will come to pass. However, we will watch for any kind of a feedback north of Panama here if this monsoon load drifts a little bit farther north. But as expected, the activity should stay over Central America and the Eastern Pacific, and any thunderstorm activity that tries to get going on the Caribbean side will likely be limited, and low pressure will probably be confined to the continent and the Eastern Pacific side of things, and they may get a named storm out of this eventually, and the big story will be rainfall for Central America. There are warnings out for that with flooding that could occur in those regions. The area that I discussed yesterday that we were going to be watching for this weekend and early next week off the southeast United States coastline as a trough split occurs with a trough that uh, leaves a piece behind off the Carolinas and the Georgia coastline. The models have backed off a little bit on that. The European and GFS still show a weak trough or closed low pressure. ECMWF showing closed low, very weak with the GFS only showing an open trough, much a uh, little bit weaker than yesterday's solutions. However, we will, st we will still watch this area as expected the models will be fluctuating with this it's possible they will drop it all together because it is after all four five six days out in advance and to again to forecast something that delicate is difficult and it was interesting to see the kind of model agreement we had yesterday it was rather rare to have that kind of agreement on such a feature but with it backing off it'll fluctuate we may have to watch this area uh, for concern but it won't be too big of a deal even if there is something there because it won't have a whole lot of time or the favorable conditions to develop into anything strong and it may not develop at all but we will be keeping our eyes to this area as we head towards this weekend we're also going to have tropical waves coming off of africa there's a lot of dry air out here saharan air layer over the eastern and central atlantic that will be knocking these waves down a little bit as they come across however they are starting to become more well defined as we get further along in the season here and we will have to start watching this area uh, for activity to be picking up by the time we get towards the end of the month and into early august we're going to start are watching for the Cape Verde season to come into play. If we look over here at the MJO, we are now moving out. This is the current, this is not a model forecast like I usually show. This is the observations here. We're out here at July 11th as of yesterday, moving out into a uh, not quadrant, octant one over here, which favors upward motion over the Atlantic region of the world. And we're going to be continuing out into this area, likely curving back into octant two. And there's hints by the models that will go back into the igloo over here where the MJO is ill-defined, but may come right back out into this area as we head into August and start into the heart of the hurricane season. So upward motion is supposed to stay in this area of the world, which makes sense given that the Atlantic is very warm overall relative to normal compared to the rest of the tropical ocean basins around the world. Now today, since the Atlantic is quiet, I want to pay a little bit of attention to this Typhoon Mayon, I think is how you pronounce his name, over in the Western Pacific. And there's a lot of interesting things going on. By the end of the video, I'm going to tie some of this in with the Atlantic, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we can see the structure um, going on here. We have a little bit of an eye that's been trying to pop out since yesterday. It looked like a rapid intensification for some time yesterday when the eye suddenly popped out while the initial intensity was supposed to be 40 knots. But the eye wall structure has been ill-defined since that time. There's a little bit of dry air possibly working in with the core over here. You can see that the CDO has some breaks in it. It's a little bit ill-defined in here, but the overall outflow structure is improving greatly. There's this tiny upper low here which may be a little bit hard to see, which is ventilating the storm and bringing an outflow channel out of the northwest quadrant, which is a feature that not very many typhoons can boast of, or hurricanes for that matter, unless they become very strong and have perfect upper level conditions. So this upper low, which is backing westward along with Mayon in tandem, is going to be helping this feature a lot. This upper ridge over here to the north has been what has keeping it from exploding right away here. Oops, my computer decided to refresh just then. So if we go back over here, Let's try to get this to play. All right, let's click play and speed it up a little bit. If we go over here, here's that ridge to the north of the system. 
and uh, Mayon is moving westward beneath it. This area of the ridge, I talk about this a lot, the southeastern flank is full of converging air aloft, which is sinking and causing subsidence and pinching on the northern side of the storm. This has been keeping both the outflow down in the northeast quad and has also been perhaps injecting some dry air into the northern part of the circulation and keeping him down for now. He has been strengthening, but not explosively, which is why the core is still not fully well defined here, but the structure is getting there. In other words, the symmetric nature of this storm is starting to impress me, which means this is going to strengthen a whole lot as it continues to move west-northwest over the next few days, and we likely will be dealing with a major typhoon within two to three days. That will be something Japan needs to watch. You can see the edge of the ridge is right over here, where these clouds are in this front, meaning that this is going to try to curve up and try to hit southern Japan. I want to show you the European model from last night. Um, here's that ridge. This is the, the initialization, zero hours from last night. Here's the storm, Mayon down here. Here's that ridge I told you about, and there's the edge like I pointed out on the satellite imagery. Now, if we go out here to 72 hours, we can see that Mayon has strengthened a whole lot. This is 500 millibars, and by the way, these blue contours here are the 500 millibar height lines. These colors, these color fills in here, these reds and oranges, are the 850 millibar temperature, which we're not going to worry about too much. I'm paying mainly attention to these blue lines here, indicating the 500 millibar height. So if we go out to 72 hours here, here's the typhoon, and it's moving west-northwest on the southern periphery of this ridge. Now, immediately I see a problem here for Japan, and I'm asking myself, where is the big long wave trough that's going to pick up this typhoon and recurve it out really fast over here? And the reason I ask that is because not about it recurving, because look, we do have a weakness in here. We have this trough. This is going to be able to try to come around the ridge, but there's no big long wave. There's all this blocking over the top over here, which means that Mayon may not move very fast. Generally, these long wave troughs pick up the typhoons, and they move at, you know, 30, 40 miles an hour as they curve out to the northeast, which brings them over land areas for only a brief period of time. But if we continue to go out here, this is 120 hours, and here's the typhoon, and it's really strong. This is at 500 millibars, and you can see how low the heights are at the center, and this is moving up now. Here's that weakness, which is bringing it north, but still all the blocking over the top. I'm going to move forward in 24-hour increments now. This is 144, and the European is bringing it right into southern Japan over here. If I go to 168, here it is, but realize that I just went out 24 hours, and it only moved from southern Japan just a little bit northeastward here. Normally these typhoons are moving a lot faster than that after they make landfall. And if I go out to 192 hours, it's over Tokyo weakening. And at the surface, it's still at, at least a weak typhoon strength, perhaps strong tropical storm by this time as it's been moving over land. But the steering basically brings it over the length of this part of Japan over the course of two to three days which would be a pretty bad disaster for them, I would think, with all of the rainfall that would come with that and all the wind that they'd have to deal with with possibly a major typhoon making landfall in southern Japan with this track. And it's all thanks to this blocking, which is up here over northeastern Asia, not allowing a long wave trough to dive in and take the storm out really fast like it normally does. And this is going to be some bad news for Japan if this does indeed make landfall. It may still avoid the country, but it is kind of right there in the way. And so I would be very, very prepared if I was in Japan right now. And if you have folks over there that you know, I'd let them know to be ready for this potential typhoon and keep tuned to the official bulletins on this storm. Now I want to show something else regarding the Atlantic tied to the Pacific, if we can be a little selfish here for a minute. This is the map that I've showed you guys before. This is the 500 millibar height anomalies for August to October, the height of the hurricane season for all of the years since 1950 that had three or more hurricanes hit the United States coastline. And we've talked about this blocking that shows up south of Hudson Bay over southeast Canada and the northeast United States, which allows uh, this low heights to develop over here the southeastern United States and brings the hurricanes in towards the coastline and it results in all those landfalls. Now, notice what we've been seeing on the European model here, all this blocking that shows up over Northeast Asia. Um, north of Japan over here. And remember, when we talk about the analogs between the north, the west-north Pacific and the west-north Atlantic, we generally think of this as the eastern seaboard where Japan is, and Tokyo is generally where Cape Hatteras is. It's around the same latitude. New England would be up here over northeast Asia. Now, if we look at this map, and then if we take the same time period, the same years, the 500 millibar anomaly patterns for northeast Asia, look what happens. 
see all this blocking over northeast asia and northern japan sitting right in here latitude 45 to 50 the same as the latitude of the blocking that we're seeing here i put these images to scale so the latitude is about the same here 45 to 50 showing up over these northern regions and it's interesting to see this teleconnection this also is correlated with june and july ridging over this area of the world as well and i saw this on the european and i was like huh could there be a connection if we connect typhoons and hurricanes in the Atlantic, couldn't we also connect the long wave pattern here as it projects down the road towards the United States, showing this blocking up here? It's also showing up in the analogs for hurricanes hitting the United States, the same kind of pattern. It's interesting to see, and that could be possible more support as we've had this blocking showing up so far this year, this July over Asia. If that continues, that could be another clue that we may be headed toward a pattern more like this for the heart of the hurricane season for the Atlantic, which may bring the Caribbean and the southeastern U.S. into more danger as we have been talking about for this season. So it'll be interesting to see if the steering pattern analogs with the Pacific work out, and we'll be also uh, hoping and praying for Japan that this typhoon, which will likely be major, does not bring a disaster to the country, which has already suffered a lot in recent weeks and months, and hopefully it will avoid them, but chances are it may at least graze them, so we will hope that it won't be too bad for them. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.